Let me pour you some tea. I wish you and us to drink tea poured by a good and devoted Kilian, daughter-in-law. The older son gets, the more this becomes important to us. Does anyone know what Enye, mother-in-law, will be like in the future, and who is Kilian? Hello, dear viewers. You're watching Kazakh Live Duster with Tamara Asar. Today we'll talk about Kilian. Our dear guest today is an ethnographer, Daulet Jailobayev. Daulet Jailobayev. Welcome, Mr. Daulet. There are a lot of customs regarding Kilin. The people that honored Kilin that came to the family attached special importance to her. Kilin was treated with both strictness and kindness. Conversations about Kelin and Yinye never ended, like conversations about how the earth formed and water started. Tell us about it, as a scientist and ethnographer. Traditional relationships in Kazakh society developed around family problems. The institution of family can be called a large combination of the Kazakh ethnics and tradition. Destruction of the institution of family can be considered as the destruction of society. Well said. The arrival of Kilian is accompanied by several customs. It is after Qasuzatu, seeing of the daughter-in-law. There are some peculiar things regarding the bride's arrival at her husband's house. For example, when a bride is brought in, she is not immediately led into the house. First they stop near the village, then adult mothers and sisters-in-law meet the bride, give their consent and bring her to the house. Please tell us about it. Why don't they let her into the house? In fact, according to Kazakh traditions, a quick arrival of a stranger is wrong. For example, rushing into the house, running in or riding a horse. There are some peculiarities. The same with the bride. She should stop first and then enter the house. For example, when her husband is going to visit his wife's relatives, he doesn't come on a horse ride to the house. He stops on the way and walks. There are such boundaries and limitations. As they say, slaughtering cattle for the Cohen laws. They bring this cattle to the house where the bride comes. When the bride comes to her husband's house, she should not sit down and talk until they give permission. She should be covered with a kerchief. This is a condition. A curtain is specially hanged for her. She goes behind this curtain and waits there. Then comes a ceremony called betashar. This is how it goes. The arrival of the bride is a grace for the Kazakhs. Since this is the beginning and the continuation of life, continuation of the generation. Then follows the ceremony of revealing the bride's face. When the bride enters the house, she must cross the threshold with her right foot. Yes, there is such a tradition, crossing the threshold with the right foot, showing the place when the curtain is opened, everything is done according to the tradition. First, Kilian enters the house of a close relative of her husband, for example, the house of the husband's older brother or his close relative. She enters with her right foot, but she doesn't bow to anyone until the Betashar ceremony is over. Our aim is to popularize folk traditions, therefore we must explain everything in detail. For example, tell us about Betashar ceremony. 
Bitashar ceremony is held after Qasuzatu in the groom's house. A famous akin and specially invited creative people take part in this rite. Relatives and respected people of the village are usually interested who would open the face of the bride. This shows the high aesthetic culture and delicate approach of our people to Bedashar ceremony. All people take part in this solemn event, accompanied by songs and the melodic sound of Dombra. Akins praise in their songs, reverence for ancestors. Greet the older generation and relatives. Akins introduce the bride to the village and her future family. They praise the worthy family where the bride arrived. Yes, they praise in songs the bride, its elders, as well as tell the bride farewell words and give advices for future life. Then a young family is born. The ceremony of the birth of a young family. After it, the cattle is butchered. Everyone says their wishes. The Mongolian Kazakhs call this a wish. In the West, they call it alms gift. In other words, receiving the blessings of elders. There is also such a tradition like eating the spine of this cattle without touching its bones with your teeth and wrapping it in white cloth, throwing it towards the hearth of the newlyweds. Dear viewers, please, can you imagine how to eat meat from the backbone of the cattle without touching it with your teeth? Yeah. In general, people do it in real life. The backbone meat is cooked faster than the other parts of cattle. Therefore, at big holidays, Kazakhs boiled it with other pieces of meat, having previously wrapped it in a special bag so that the meat is cooked all at once. If the backbone meat is cooked without this bag, then the meat will quickly soften and may fall off the bone, and it will not be worthy to be served for guests as the main dish. <laughs> This is done to ensure that their family is strong and friendly. After the separation of the family, all relatives gather and help the newlyweds create the conditions for them to find their place in society. They provide them with cattle and necessary things. They help with what they can. Kazakhs call this tradition Nimirun. What was that? Nimirun. Help for the newlyweds. Yes, help for the newlyweds. Uh, Another custom when the bride comes is the opening of the dowry, the bride's dowry. Daughters-in-law and sisters-in-law gather to watch it. Mothers-in-law. Mothers-in-law, everyone gather and look what is there, what is not. There is the concept called sip. They say to open or put sip. Everyone takes a gift for himself from there. Kazakhs say, look at the bride upon arrival and take the sip when it is offered. Look at the bride upon arrival and take the sip when it is offered. Take the sip when it is offered. Right, take the sip when it is offered. At the opening of Korjan, a bag with gifts, everyone admires if there are good gifts and criticizes if the gifts are bad. I'm sorry for interrupting. Sip is a large piece of cloth in which they wrap the gifts. That is the bride's dowry, right? Some gifts were meant for the people who opened the sep. They received the gifts. In other words, the honored daughters-in-law, sisters-in-law of this village fought to open the sep. You can talk a lot about the educational value of the ceremonies. Right. 
so the feast goes on. Life after the celebration shows the basic social situation of the bride. It shows the social situation of a bride's family. Yes, that's right. The reputation of a bride is connected with her service, for example, giving a bow, opening the tendik, serving the father-in-law and mother-in-law. Then they start wearing zhilek or zhamulga. The daughter-in-law should wear this kerchief for a year, put on this zhilek. The bride has a white fringed zhilek which covers her face. She wears it on her head. She uses the zhilek until she gives birth to a child and her status rises. A daughter-in-law, a girl, was recognized in the Kazakh society by her clothes. For example, girls wore a red headwear called takia. If not, they wore a red kerchief. If there was an eagle owl feather on the red takia kerchief, this meant that the girl was engaged. And after marriage, they wore a kerchief. This is how their status was recognized. Why Jilek? Why Jilek? Thank you for sharing it with us. Daulet, since you're a man, I cannot ask you many questions, but I want to add. The arrival of Kelin is a wonderful phenomenon that determines the social situation of the bride. Here, the host of the feast actually shows his level of living. His resources, whether he has more knowledge and savings than others. So, dear viewers, are you ready for such a day? It's not too late if you begin to prepare right now after this program. You need to pay attention to the upbringing you've acquired, to what you can give to your children, your offspring, how you will meet your daughter-in-law tomorrow. After the daughter-in-law arrived, a white French kerchief was put on her head. What are her duties after that? Her first duty is to pour tea. There is a wonderful ceremony, tea of the daughter-in-law. A special outfit is prepared for the ceremony. It is a light vest and a dress. It is prepared by her mother-in-law. The daughter-in-law puts on a white chilek and sits next to the samovar. All relatives gather and look forward to tea drinking. So, dear mothers who raise daughters who are ready for marriage, don't forget to teach them how to pour tea. Dear Mr. Daulet, thank you very much. As the saying goes, all that a camel knows is leaves. Since our program is about traditions, we primarily rely on historians, researchers, and ethnographers. So we want to thank you with all our hearts for sharing your knowledge, research, and experience. Thank you, too. Come and visit us again. Thank you. We continue our program Kazakh Live Dastur at the Svadba Datkizet Center. Our next guest is a cultural figure of the Republic of Kazakhstan and a singer Jazira Bayerbekova.
Welcome, I want to ask kind of a daughter-in-law you were. I became a Kilian 23 years ago. I lived with Ata and Yenye, father-in-law and mother-in-law, for two out of the 40 years of my life. And we've lived separately for the remaining 38 years. The two years that I lived with my parents-in-law are in completely different life. Why? I came to a very strict family. Few daughters-in-law came from other regions, to the region I came to as a daughter-in-law. It was a district center. Very few came even from other districts. So everyone in that village got married only to their fellow villagers without going beyond. Yes, that's right. They taught them since childhood not to marry a bride from other regions. But Jean Bulat did not obey and brought the bride from another region. He broke the rule and brought a girl from Shimkent. Yes, difficult situation. Shimkent sticks to traditions and customs. Why was it difficult for you? Although we follow traditions, they are followed differently in different regions of Kazakhstan. What are the features? For example, when they greet the elders, they usually say, Salamat Sizba, but we won't accept this greeting, Salamat Sizba, in our region. We're asked to greet properly. So what would be the proper way? We should say, Salam Birdak, then you bow. But this is another thing. Then when we cook Bishbarmak and after everyone eats, we make Naran. In the beginning, when I cut everything to make narin, they told me why I chopped everything so finely. Then, when making tea, did I remind you about tea? Yes, tea, let me pour some tea. We don't pour an offer tea without returning it three times. Right. When I did this, they said to me, what are you doing? The tea will cool down. So it was very difficult for me since our traditions were very different. You overcame difficulties, you became a daughter-in-law, thank God. But you did a great job in that village. Did you have any funny moments? I think our viewers would like to hear it. Once I was rolling out dough, there were guests at home. Suddenly, an elderly woman, an elder sister-in-law, sat next to me to relax in the shade. Another sister-in-law sat next to her. They talked to each other. Then I felt uncomfortable staying silent. While rolling out the dough, I asked, how was I Sulu? So that they wouldn't think it was unpleasant for me. I thought that the name of that elderly woman's daughter-in-law was I Sulu. The woman looked at me with a piercing glance. Then I thought that she did not hear me and I asked again, how was I Sulu? I Sulu. Then the sister-in-law who was sitting next to her said, hey, she's talking to you, and laughed. <laughs> After that, another sister-in-law of this house ran up to me and said, what are you saying? This grandmother's name is Aisulu. So you... I thought her daughter-in-law name was Aisulu because I heard this name a lot at home. That's how I offended the elderly woman. So you said her name. Yes, I was looking at her and asked, how is Aisulu? How embarrassing. I had such moments because of my carelessness. How did you settle it down? Did you apologize? Then you were still young, even apologizing was probably difficult. You cannot even say I'm sorry, was ashamed to look her in the face. I asked others to bring her tea. You ran away when you saw her, didn't you? Yes, I greeted her from a distance and ran away. Then everything was forgotten as time passed. So you came as a daughter-in-law to Kuzlorda regions, Aral district? Yes. They bow differently in different regions. For example, in the south, they put a hand to the chest. How do they bow in the Aral district? In Mangasta, we put our hand on our knee and bend our knee. They bow in the same way both in our area and in Aral. Like this, with two hands. With two hands. And some people don't bow at all. There are different traditions in different areas of our Kazakhstan. They can be different even within the same region and different districts. 
There are some rules even in the villages of these districts and even in every family. Right. I cannot disagree with the rules with others' traditions because I believe that everyone unites his family through these traditions and rules. I think that every tradition, if it doesn't seem strange, brings only good. If only this tradition doesn't hurt anyone. If the tradition doesn't hurt, it brings a lot of good. If it doesn't seem strange. Kazakhs have a beautiful saying, every country has its customs. Therefore, each region formed and developed its own traditions according to their rules and climate. If it's God's will, you will become a mother-in-law someday. What kind of mother-in-law you think you will be? When your son Kazbek brings a bride over. When I think about the days when I will become a mother-in-law, only beautiful pictures appear in my mind. I cannot be strict as my mother-in-law because I'm not such a person by nature. You also can be as kind as a mom. I will probably choose for myself something in between my mother-in-law and my mom. But I will also have to keep up with the time. I think you shouldn't hurt the daughter-in-law saying, we did like this before. I used to do this for my mother-in-law like this. So you will probably be the best mother-in-law who will say only all the good and hide all the bad. I think I will be a good mother-in-law and my daughter-in-law will be kind and faithful. I believe you should first support the daughter-in-law who came to a new home, to another family until she gets used to it. You need to take her opinion into account. And the daughter-in-law cannot set her rules in this house. If she tries to do this, it will spoil the relationships in this family. I think whichever traditions the family observes, the daughter-in-law who came into a new family should follow the rules of this family. We rely on Kazakh saying, Kazakhs could convey the whole idea in one phrase, as they say, if you love the son, love his mother. The girl who loves her son should also love his mother. So we, not even being mothers-in-law, can say anything now. We know everything in theory, but in practice, time will tell. We don't know what tomorrow holds for us. But I believe that if you think only about the good, everything will be good too. Indeed. I think it all depends on the intention. It all depends on the intention. Dear daughters-in-law, dear mothers-in-law, the most important thing, as Jezira said, is that if devotion and kindness is above all, then everything will be fine. We want to thank our daughter-in-law, the future mother-in-law, Jezira, for coming. Thank you. Your tea is very good. You're always welcome here. If you have a good Kelyan, the house will be full of guests. If she's bad, all the guests will hurry to leave you home. This proverb seems to determine the formula of life. I wish you to have many guests who wouldn't like to leave your home. May your daughter-in-law be good.